Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Please be seated. <laughs> Today, well, if there were seats, where you have them. Sit if you have them. That's like smoke if you have them, right? <laughs> Sit if you have them. <laughs> Today, we gather, as people have done for so many years, on the 11th day of the 11th month. We are part of an unbroken chain of respect and memory, and we continue that year in and year out. We reflect on the courage of this nation's men and women who answered the call of duty, no matter how difficult the challenge ahead. We thank them for their service. We can never thank them enough. It's important we do it every opportunity we have. And if there's one group who deserves our special thanks and our constant thanks, and some of them are here today, I want you to applaud them all as our Gold Star families. Let's thank them. And let's thank everyone who made today's event possible and made it the special event it is. Firstly, our sponsor, the History Channel. Let's thank them for making this possible today. And the NYC Joint Service Color Guard the Team Liberty Band, and someone who I thought did a fantastic rendition of the national anthem, Sergeant Louis Lacalzi. Let's thank them all. We have a number of special guests, a number of members of my administration here. Our public advocate, Tish James, is here, and we thank her for supporting this event. 
And my former boss is here. I always love to see a Marine who keeps serving in every way, our former mayor, David Dinkins. Let's thank him for all he's done. I can tell you, having worked for years for Mayor Dinkins, I heard many, many a Semper Fi along the way. <laughs> Never, ever failed to stop and greet his fellow Marine, and he is proud of that to this day. We are also joined, just arriving to join us, Congressman Charlie Rangel and Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Let's thank them for their service. And I am told that Jacob deGrom is here from the New York Mets. Is that a true statement? Well, he's going to be joining us then. Where is he? Where is he? Jacob, thank you. Jacob, I have to say, just proves that no matter what happens, there's always hope for the New York Mets. So <laughs> as a, a standout pitcher this year and the National League Rookie of the Year, he brought a lot of hope to New York City. Thank you, Jacob, for all you have done, and thank you for supporting our veterans. This day has meant a lot always for my family because we have something that makes us very proud as a family. My wife and I both had parents from the World War II generation and literally all four of our parents served in the war effort each in their own way. My wife's father was in the army in Europe, in France and Italy. Her mother was a classic Rosie the Riveter. She worked in the Springfield, Massachusetts armory making armaments for our troops overseas. My mother worked here in New York City at the Office of War Information, helping to send broadcast to then occupied Italy, the land of her parents. My father served in the Pacific Theater in the Army in a number of battles, including, including the Battle of Okinawa, where he was grievously wounded, but thank God survived and came back. So each of the parents that we grew up with talked all the time about their experiences. And sometimes they wouldn't talk about them. Sometimes they were too difficult to talk about or they didn't have the words for it. But we, my wife and I, had such a pride in our parents' service. And I think a lot of people here in this room can understand when you grow up with that, uh, you have a deep feeling what it means for someone to serve. And, and in some ways, the things that aren't said and the challenges that continue to follow those who serve throughout their life speak volumes. Sometimes the things that aren't put into words stick with you as well. It all builds a tremendous respect for people who went forward into battle or went forward into any form of service on behalf of our nation. It also reminds you there is often a price they pay and a price that their families have to pay in support of those who serve. So this is a day when we have to think deeply about our commitment to the men and women who have served us. That is a commitment that we have to feel each and every day. It can never leave us. It can never be something that we look away from. It's very convenient to forget those who served when there isn't a war going on or there isn't a war that we feel here at home. But it's not allowable for us ever to forget. Our obligation to them is literally eternal. It's something, especially those of us in public service, have to keep in front of our minds at all times. So Veterans Day, to me, is a day of recommitment. It's a day of memory and appreciation, but most especially of recommitment to those who have served. Now, let's be clear. The challenges that those who return to this country from battle face are immense, and they've become in some ways even harder over the years. There's always challenges economically and in these times, tougher than in some past years, unemployment, even homelessness afflicting our veterans, PTSD in ways we've never seen before. So we have to help each veteran, each in turn, each in the way they need. This city is a home to over 225,000 veterans. That is a source of great pride for New York City. But those numbers continue to grow as so many have returned from Iraq and Afghanistan, and again, some with challenges even deeper than those known by past generations. So today, we're in a place that is part of the solution. Literally, this building is a place where 
things are happening in support of our veterans that are examples to us all of what we need to do. Nearly 40 veterans living here in the Prince George might be on the streets otherwise. People who have served with distinction, who took up the call of their nation, think about it, might have ended up on the streets, homeless, were it not for this facility and the people who run it. And I want to particularly thank a wonderful organization called Common Ground that makes possible the work here. Let's give them a round of applause. They are one of the city's largest providers of housing to homeless and low-income families, and they're here for our veterans as well. They serve over 450 veterans, and those veterans deserve all of our help now. There's still a challenge with homelessness in this city and so many other cities around the nation when it comes to our veterans, but there is real progress. Since 2011, the number of homeless vets in New York City is down 64%. That is something to be happy about. It's not, it is something to be happy about, but it is not a cause for complacency. And you'll hear from General Sutton in a moment, and I have to tell you, she and I are deeply committed by the end of next year to not having a single homeless veteran in this city. And we need your help to achieve that. And there's more than just housing that has to be accounted for. With the help of the city's Office of Small Business Services, there are special Workforce One centers for veterans. And these centers have placed over 1,000 veterans and spouses in jobs since January. By the way, sometimes if a veteran is unable to work, the best thing, obviously, you can do for the family is help the spouse get work. And that's how these Workforce One centers operate to great effect. They've helped more than 3,800 veterans with career counseling and workshops and they're expanding services to be available all over the city. You know, when I thought about the challenges we face, again, some of them more complex than we've ever seen in terms of our ability and need to service and support our veterans, I thought about who would bring the energy and the focus and the up-to-date understanding of what our veterans face, and that person is General Lori Sutton, and I am so honored that she took the role as our new city's Veterans Affairs Commissioner. And you're going you're gonna to hear from her in a moment, and you'll tell immediately what I could tell. This is someone with a real passion for helping all those who serve, for helping their families. She served as the Army's highest-ranking psychiatrist, and she was a pioneer in innovative treatments for PTSD and TBI. And she understands we have to treat the whole veteran and the whole family. And you'll hear from her in a moment how she is proceeding with that work, which is so important. One more thing I want to say in English, and I'm going to say something briefly in Spanish, it being New York City, we speak many languages, and then I'll call up the general. You know, another veteran said something a few decades back about the meaning of this day, not just in terms of the people who serve, but what they serve to achieve. A famous veteran who served his nation in so many ways, John F. Kennedy, and he said on a day like this at a Veterans Day ceremony, that what our men and women in uniform fight for, he said, quote, is never a few feet of cornfield or a rocky hill, but to ensure our country can continue to fulfill the great hopes of its founders. Remember that it's not just the act of serving or the physical achievements. It is in the name of freedom. It is literally in the name of all of us. We can never forget that in every November 11th, and I'll state the obvious, every day we have to remember and we have to act on that memory. A moment in Spanish. Hoy honramos a los veteranos de nuestra nación. Les damos las gracias por su servicio inspirador y renovamos nuestro compromiso para garantizarles la atención y ayuda que necesiten cuando regresen a casa. With that, we'll switch back to English now. With that, <laughs> it is my honor to introduce the city's Veterans Affairs Commissioner, General Lori Sutton. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for the privilege of serving as your Commissioner of Veterans Affairs. 
You know, at the Mayor's Office of Veterans Affairs, every day is Veterans Day, but thank you so much for coming out this year and making it all the more special. On this special day of commemoration, I would like to thank all who have joined us this morning. All services, all generations of veterans, all components, active, National Guard, reserve, and family members, and a special uh, recognition to our Gold Star mothers and all that you have sacrificed. Thank you so much for all being with here at our celebration of service this morning. Looking across this room, I'm inspired by the presence of so many who care so much for our veterans and their loved ones. Truly, we are all in this together. You know, during my first few weeks as the MOVA commissioner, I've been awed and inspired by all that is happening across our great city in every domain. Whether the Veterans Art Gallery exhibit currently in Staten Island, the first anniversary of the peer mentor program at the Bronx Veteran Court, the Fort Totten service honoring those who served in the 77th Infantry Division and the United States Army Reserve Command, the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce Veterans Affairs Council, or the CUNY IBM student team competition to improve New York City services, recently launched at the Intrepid. Truly, New York City is the place to make things happen that truly matter. And yet, our toughest and most important work lies ahead. Many veterans are thriving. Many of all generations are still struggling. As one of my treasured veteran mentors reminds me, I'll call him Johnny, a veteran whom I recently met sitting down in his living room, a makeshift cardboard shelter downtown. Johnny told me, he said, ma'am, without an address, you do not exist. This is the veteran all of us are working for. Johnny and his fellow veterans, sisters and brothers, are not looking for a hand out. They're looking for a hand up. It's our civic and national duty, and New York City is leading the way. In closing, I would like to recognize three extraordinary individuals and personal mentors whose ongoing contributions embody the legacy of service, sacrifice, and ingenuity of our veteran family. Please hold your applause until the end of this brief tribute. Sergeant Jack Eubanks, proud Marine, Hoorah. <laughs> our honored branch of service this year, combat veteran of four deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, my senior enlisted advisor at the Defense Centers of Excellence for Psychological Health and Traumatic Brain Injury, current actor, author, and playwright, and MILVET member of the inaugural class of Posse Scholars, Jennifer Rivera, sitting right here next to Mayor Dinkins, Jennifer Rivera, who is the Chief of Human Resources at Fountain House, a program here in New York City that was recently recognized by the Hilton International Foundation for their Humanitarian Prize, the first time ever that this prize has been awarded to a organization that deals with mental health issues. And I will tell you, Jennifer has been the spearhead leading the way towards applying the Fountain House principles for the first time in its 70 year history to standing up the first prototype vet club here in New York City. Robert Morgenthau, decorated World War II, United States Navy veteran who served on numerous destroyers in the Pacific Theater, longest serving district attorney of New York County, from 1975 to 2009, current counsel at Wachtell, Lipton, Rosen, and Katz, and fearless advocate and champion of justice, speaking out on behalf of the needs and strengths of returning New York City 
veterans and their loved ones. Mr. Morgenthau, I aspire to stand in your shadow. Would the three of you please stand so we can recognize you? I look forward to working with each of you to close gaps and open opportunities across our great city. In our commitment to end veteran homelessness, connect veterans and their families of all generations to the best public and private resources, and embrace returning veterans as they continue to pursue lives of purpose, passion, and meaning. We need you in New York City and in communities across our great nation. Thank you for all that each of you have done and continue to do in making our country the land of the free because of the brave. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. I want to also welcome some uh, additional elected officials who I'd like to welcome Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer and New York City Council Member Vinnie Gentili. Let's thank them for their service. <laughs> and before I call up our special guest, just want to note, I see you, as I mentioned, Charlie Rangel joined us a little while ago. And if, if you spend any time around Charlie Rangel, he tells a story of a, of a rough day in the Korean War when things didn't look like they were going to work out okay, but they did, thank God, he fought his way through. He is now such a leader in this city, and I think those experiences for him and so many others who served made them great leaders. But, uh, Congressman, there's that line you use, that since that day in Korea, you never had a bad day since. So, <laughs> I think that's an optimistic view. <laughs> and, that's, uh, and we thank you for your service then and now. The special guest we have today is really someone quite quite extraordinary. Forty years of service to his country, all around the world, including in Iraq and Afghanistan. I was talking to General Regner before we came out here, and uh, I do have to note there is one thing about him you have to know. He comes from a long line of military families. General, I hope you don't mind me sharing this fact. Member of members of the Army and Navy, going back and served this country well over 100 years. A lot of Army folks, a lot of Navy folks, but only one chose to go the path of the Marines. And I said, General, does that make you the black sheep of the family? <laughs> but, he, but he told me he is still invited to family meals and gatherings. And he has done such extraordinary things for this nation. So I can say, General, on behalf of all 8.4 million New Yorkers, God bless you for what you've done for this country. It is my honor to introduce to all of you Major General Michael Regner. <laughs> Very tough act to follow, but this is no damn act. <laughs> to my fellow veterans, to the Gold Star mothers and Gold Star families, thank you for the legacy, the education, the discipline that you gave to me. Thanks for everything you continue to do, because the active duty members that are all around the room, we owe what we have given back to America because of the legacy of our veterans. Mr. Mayor, you're absolutely right, sir. I was very fortunate that my father, like Charlie Rangel, served in Korea. And my father, an Air Force pilot uh, during World War II, shot down a few times, but that's when he met my mom in the hospital. <laughs> a few years later, I came around. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I, she's tough to keep up with. But here, private joke now that we're sharing secrets, Mr. Mayor. So I'm in the back room with the commissioner, and she's psychoanalyzing the Marine. <laughs> Psychiatrist, I saw it. Okay, for all the recruiters in here, and if you're a veteran or you're a, a, just a supporter of the Armed Forces of America, you're a recruiter. I used to do this recruiting gig. 
So I had to get in everybody's brain. So Lori knows me. <laughs> it didn't take long, sir. <laughs> we, that's right. I love her. And Mr. Mayor, I, sir, I give you homework. A Marine is never intimidated by a microphone. <laughs> Especially a general. So, Mr. Mayor, sir, as we all know, our, our country has to take a good look at our defense budgets. And as uh, an older, my two older brothers were Vietnam veterans, and I did see, sir, they did have psychological, physiological challenges after uh, their service to our nation. They still have those challenges, and many of you have those challenges. So what the general talked a little bit about today are some very, very valuable programs that show that we keep the faith. Just because you take this uniform off and you put on the other uniform, the civilian uniform, we must continue to keep the faith in many of the programs that Lori talked about. Mr. Mayor, sir, if the opportunity presents itself and you're signing those budgets, sir, please remember how much your veterans continue to give back to this great city. Thank you very much, sir. Hoorah. I leave you all because the mayor said, General, I know you could talk a long time. You've been a recruiter. You've worked on Capitol Hill. Oh, oh I, worked with, I worked with a good congressman. And he says, back then he says, Colonel, you might, you might have a career in the Marine Corps. That was a few years ago. God bless all of you, Semper Fi, and I love our veterans. Hoorah. Now, he's a tough act to follow. <laughs> That's impressive. General, thank you so much for all you do. And, and you both inspire us, and you remind us of our obligation. And that's something we will follow through on here in New York City. With that, just want to thank everyone for being a part of this gathering. Uh, this is going to be a day to celebrate our veterans, to appreciate them, to honor them. Tomorrow, we go back to work serving them together. Thank you. Have a great day.